Episode two, odds on favorite. We're back. Myself and Sean Dalton. No Antonio Sands this week. He unfortunately has a road trip that he's got to be on today, so he won't be able to record with us. So hoping he has safe travels. But Dalton, little recap from last week. Tone had a good week, four and three, zero and one on his mortal lock. You and him, Chiefs. We'll talk about that in a sec. But for me and you, two and five on the week. One, I was one and zero. My mortal lock story. You had the Chiefs, obviously. Thoughts? Um, what happened? What happened was the fa- not only the Falcons but the Giants. They they suck. The Chiefs suck. Yeah, the Giants blow. Uh, the Hawks my one and a half said that. And everyone looked at me, and they were like, oh, dude, the Giants are going to beat them. It was brutal being at that game, watching only one field goal go up, especially for my fantasy team, eating a whole 90 points from Graham Gannell. Um, It was not a fun game. And I am heavily, heavily fading the Giants this year. So anytime I see the Giants anywhere close to favored, it's going the other way. Because yeah, I mean, we're not winning another game. They're, they're, they're atrocious. I mean, they might be the worst team in the NFL, honestly. <sighs> well... I mean, after the killed. Bears just won, shit. I mean, we're, we're we're close to the bottom. We're bottom five. I'd the say. Bears put up the thirty burger last night. Like they did. But it was also against. We the, haven't put the up Washington thirty points in three Bozos. years. Yeah. yeah if Daniel Jones only played Washington in his career, he'd be a Hall of Famer. I don't know. And, and especially the Falcons, in prime time. Falcons sold us in London. What happened? Look, I should have known that Desmond Pitts Ritter was anytime. not going to do good. <laughs> yeah, Pitts. Yeah, I'm officially done with his ass. I should have known. Desmond Ritter wasn't going to do anything because he is horrible on the road, but so much better on at home. You know, that was just I – th- I thought it was going to be a field goal game. I didn't think the Jags were going to come out and absolutely blow them out. That was a boring game to watch because it was all Jags. You know, you watched two interceptions back-to-back from Desmond Ritter. It, it just – I lost the hope in the Falcons after the first quarter. Looked, and then it, it got demolished, but – the one I want to talk about is the the Chiefs. Yeah, what happened there? So I don't know. You know, Zach Wilson, cool. first QB ever to outperform Patrick Mahomes in a game, college or NFL. Yeah, and everyone, every all, all the Taylor Swift fans that are at MetLife that game, and they probably saw that Zach Wilson did much better than Patrick Mahomes, and everyone's probably running around saying, "Oh, Zach Wilson's a better quarterback." We talked, <laughs> uh, dude. It it's. it's this end of shit with Taylor Swift, I'm sick and tired of it. I can't stand it. Yeah. Even it's 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 bad because as favoring one have the Chiefs in their bio. Oh, the Chiefs are two and zero oh as Taylor fans. How are the how is the NFL uh, that that slide down at the at the one yard line? That would have been the spread. Patrick Holmes knew he got a call from Vegas. The refs knew. The refs were on the Chiefs. It, it, I should have rolled with the 49ers. Thank God I didn't roll with the Bengals, though. That was horrible. Yeah, no, that was bad. That was bad. Um, also, our our good friend Gus Bus, Gus uh, Braganka, had uh, needed four points from Patrick Mahomes in uh, fantasy. That slide was the four, and he yep. missed it. Yep. So. All right, let's uh, jump right into these games for this week in the NFL. We'll start. We're back in London. The Jacksonville Jaguars are hosting the Buffalo Bills across the pond. Bills open up minus five and a half off a very um, convincing win against the Miami Dolphins team that we didn't think would ever lose. Actually, I did. I had them last week, but that's not for anything. Bills minus five and a half. Dalton, we'll start with you. I'll let everyone know that Tone's pick, he sent them to us. He said that this is his pick. He's on the Bills minus five and a half. Don't overthink it. That's all he said. Yeah, uh, well, I'm going to overthink it a little bit because it's not that simple. I think the Bills just got done blowing the Miami Dolphins out, putting all these points up. They had a great game. It was a divisional game, and they needed to prove something, which I totally get in Buffalo. They travel to London, where the Jaguars have already been for a week now, more than a week. Think about that. They are adjusted to the time zone. They are adjusted to the weather. They are adjusted to the climate. The Bills just getting there, what, yesterday, today, whenever they're getting there, they're not going to be that used to it. And the Jags, we've talked about it last week, they are so much better when they are in London because they just know London. 
that's the London team, the Jaguars, the Jacksonville Jaguars, because they are there so many times, back-to-back weeks. They're going to be there for the next 50 years in London. They might as well open up Jaguar Stadium in fucking London. Like, it's it's not even useless. But I think that, you know, they come off a big win. I don't think that the Bills are going to go balls to the wall here. It's the Jaguars. They're not, like – they, they don't need to blow them out. It's not the Chiefs. It's not a, you know, divisional game. It's not the Bengals. It's not the Dolphins or the Pats or the Jets. This game's kind of just like, oh, we'll, we'll give London a little, a little fun. I think it goes under. I don't – that's not going to be my pick. But 48 and a half is way too many points right now. I think it's just going to be a fun game to watch, but nothing crazy goes on. But here's what I do think. The Jags' defense allows 5.4 yards per play, and the Bills' offense is averaging 5.9 yards per play. And the Jags' defense allows the second-most fantasy points to tight ends. That being said, Dalton Kincaid did not have a good week last week. He just he got 27 yards on, like, four targets. I think Dalton Kincaid will go off. Fantasy managers, if you have Dalton Kincaid, I think he's going off. And Doug Peterson, he's 32 and 23 against the spread as a dog. And he's 9 and 6 against the the spread versus the Bills. So I'm rolling with the Jags plus 5.5. They're in London. This is their second home. They've been there. Jags 5.5. And and I'm having Kincaid over 28.5 receiving. Okay. All right. Granted, this is also the same kid that told everyone last week that Kyle Pitts in London was going to go off against the Jags defense. And he listen, had two catches for 27 yards and called it a day. Listen, listen, Desmond Ritter and Kyle Pitts is much different than Josh Allen and Dalton Kincaid. John, John Smith, our tight end one in Atlanta. Who knows? Um, all right, yeah, I kind of agree with everything Sean Dalton just said. I think that the Bills are overlooking this one. I think that they just played their big game. They made the statement in Buffalo, not adjusted to the time zone. Jacksonville's been there a whole week. I'm rolling the Jags from plus five and a half. I think this is the Trevor Lawrence game. Breakout, I think Buffalo's kind of overlooking this one, thinking ahead. They'll bounce back when they murder the Giants next week. So I'm going Jags plus five and a half, maybe even a little sprink and bank on the money line. I think the Jags can pull this one out. I don't know. I think that that's what I'm saying. Tone is on Bills minus five and a half, though. He's not overthinking it. You beat the Dolphins. You come into Jacksonville. You, you go into London. You beat Jacksonville. I wish it was that easy. I'm going Jags plus five and a half. Like um, it. We're going to take a little trip once again to college football. We did it last week. Didn't work out too well in my favor. I had Colorado – Losing by 21 and a half to USC, the Trojans. It looked good for that first half of football. And then Colorado uh, Colorado came back. They came storming back. USC blew it like they like to. And uh, if it told me anything about that, if there was anything I learned from that game, it was that USC is not legit. Colorado still not legit. <laughs> they're both bad. I think they're both bad. Oregon is better than both of them. I think Oregon's one of the Pac-12. That's That's what I got from that game. Um, and on the, I'm pretty sure on the podcast, um, last week, Antonio did say he has Oregon, Washington in the PAC 12 championship, Washington winning it, but I don't remember that. So maybe yeah, he, he said, well, maybe I'm misinterpreting that, but this week, big rivalry game, the red river rivalry, Texas and Oklahoma, two ranked teams, Oklahoma, the 12th ranked team in the country and Texas, I believe is fifth. Well, I will double check that, but. <sighs> Texas opens up as a five and a half point favorite. Dalton, what's the play in Arlington? Look, college football has been good for me, and I want to keep the streak hot for me. Um, if I learned one thing about last week is USC is in California. That's yeah, what I learned. That was the big takeaway from Sean <laughs> Dalton last week. <laughs> that, that is exactly what I learned. There now, is a look, USC first... in South Carolina, though. That's the one I was thinking about, but I was at the wrong game at the wrong time. But you know what? It worked out. I was betting the it right. It did USC work out. Game. He hit the twenty-one and a half. And I'm glad. I'm glad I faded the shitty USC team because three touchdowns, twenty-one and a half, is way too much. 
I didn't like it. First half, it looked like a blowout. I was like, oh, great. It's another it's another one of these games where it's not even close and they're going to put up two field goals and that'll be it. No, they came back. They got the backdoor cover. I think they lost by like six points, like something close. Yeah, it was close. It was a close game there at the end. It was a one-score game. So I, 21 and a half was just way too much against, you know, Deion Sanders and everything. Anyways, aside the point, look, Texas has been off to a great start. Don't get me wrong, the number five team or whatever number team they are. The number three, I just checked. They're the number three number ranked three. team in the country. Both five and oh. So battle the battle but, of the uh, five and oh teams here. Look, someone's gotta go, someone's gotta lose one today. I think Texas wins it. But no one's been talking about how good Oklahoma is. Like I think I think Oklahoma slept on. People haven't looked at what they've done. They've won every single game by fourteen plus points. It, like this team is hot, and I think they stay hot. It's a rivalry game. People are going to be electric. It's going to be a great game. I think Oklahoma, the Sooners, they're going to cover six and a half. I think it's going to be a field goal game. Six and a half, I, I, don't, I don't see it going above seven. I don't see the Texas winning by a okay. touchdown at all. All right, Dalton on the Boomer Sooner. Me and Tone disagree. We're, on, we're hooking them horns, baby. It's Texas. All day long, five and a half, six and a half, or whatever you're getting them at, doesn't matter. I think Texas blows them out of the water here. I I don't know. I, I, I got that gut feeling about this one. I just – I'm taking the better team at home. Texas, hook them horns. Tone agrees. He's got Texas. He said they're, they're winning it. Red River rivalry. I believe it. I don't know. when Texas, they might be back. They could be back. Hook them horns. We're rolling Texas. Uh, five and a half just seems like – it's going to be a close game, obviously. Oklahoma is a good school, but I, I feel like Oklahoma in these big-time games, man, they haven't been up to par with what they used to be. I don't I don't know. Maybe this, they're, maybe they're back. Maybe they're not. I don't know, but I'm going Texas. Oklahoma, Texas wins this one. I like them to pull this one off. Quinn Ewers, he's pretty good at football. Taking the better QB at home in Texas. Tough to beat him. Going, I hope <sighs> the Undertaker shows up, but. Going Texas minus five and a half. Uh, either way, it's going to be a good game. I'm, I'm yeah, excited to watch excited that game. To see that game of the week, college football. I had to I had to talk about it a little bit, but now we'll get back on track here with the NFL. It is the Houston Texans that we'll be talking about. They are going to Atlanta, I believe, who is coming off a London loss to the Jaguars. Kind of a bad loss by the Falcons. I thought they were a little bit better than what they played, um, like yeah, um, the other day. It's pretty much a pick em here. I'm seeing one pick em between these two. It's Texans, Falcons. Um, not sure if it's in Atlanta. I'm pretty sure it is, but I'm going to double check that. It's in, yep, it's in yep. Atlanta. In, all right, in Atlanta, pick em game, Texans, Falcons. I'll start off this one. Tone agree. Tone's taking Texans money line. I'm disagreeing. I'm back in our Falcons, Dalton. I think that they're a little bit better than what, we, than what they played to last week. They had a little bit of uh, – a tough time on the road. I think they come back to Houston. Not a great defense. Not like they're they're getting there. They're they're piecing it together. Bryce Young looks pretty good. But I think Fal- the Atlanta Falcons bounce back. I low-key can see them winning the NFC South. Little hot take there. I don't know. Saints, little overhyped, little not, but I, I don't know. Falcons, little I think they're a little bit better than what they played to last week. We're about to find out. This week, I'm taking Atlanta Falcons money line this week in the Pick'em game. I think they beat the Texans at home. Um, Tone's taking the Texans money line. He likes what he's been seeing out of C.J. Stroud. I think I said Bryce Young earlier. Didn't mean to do that, but C.J. Stroud, he's been piecing it together. Tone's liking what he's seeing. Texans, he's taking a money line. Dalton, we'll kick it back to you. Are you tailing our yeah. boys again, or are you, uh, are you are you off the wave? I'm fading the fuck out of the Falcons. I am so <laughs> over them. Here's what I think. Look, I totally agree. Desmond Ritter is better at home. Like I said, he's 4-0 with 67.9% completion rate with four touchdowns and one interception at home. On the road, he's 0-4 with 58.6 completion rate, one touchdown, and two interceptions. I don't know about you, but the Texans, people don't talk about them enough. They are so slept on. Yep. And I don't think that they should be opening up at plus one and a half underdogs against this dog shit, sorry, Falcons team. After what I just saw last week, I get it was in London and all that, and London games are different, but I can't keep back in these, these Falcons, man. They got the running game figured out, and that's about it. They use Bijan Robinson. I can't see anyone else being used in this game just because it's like 
Desmond Ritter just – he's not a good quarterback. He's better at home, but he's just – I don't trust him. I can't trust him because I don't know what he's going to do. If it's going to be a blowout like the Jags game, I don't like it. But anyways, Falcons are 0-3 against the spread in the last three games. And this is a crazy stat that I was reading. C.J. Stroud is the first quarterback ever to have zero interceptions on 151 passing attempts. Wow. So I'm taking Texans plus one and a half, and I'm taking the Texans money line. I'm sprinkling on the money line, but I love plus one and a half, and I love the money line even more. I think it's a 24-17 game Texans. Okay. It even throws a little score prediction in there. While we while before we get to the Philly um LA game, um, we didn't really even touch base on last night's game with the Bears. We mentioned earlier because the Oh my god. The Giants, I said they're the worst team in the NFL, definitely could be, but Chicago was right there in the folds with them. But last night they threw up forty on Washington, went forty to twenty in Washington. I mean, Justin Fields looked pretty damn good last night. So did DJ Moore. That connection was on fire. Great day to have him on my uh, have him on my starting wide receivers. Just, uh, two weeks ago, I traded him for Michael Pittman. Those and uh, Michael Pittman sucked, and he just had fifty in our league. We have weird scoring in our fantasy league. Don't ask, but he had fifty last night, and um, the guy was the guy was insane. Three touchdowns. Justin Fields looked good. Bears just steamrolling him through the whole game. Sam Howell, I'm a Sam Howell guy. I like Sam Howell. I've been following him for a while now. My one of my good buddies um, put me onto him when he was at UNC. I liked him a lot. Was hoping the Giants would get him. Eventually, they don't. They get Daniel Jones. Might want to rather have Sam Howell right now, but to each their own. Uh, Philly, LA. We'll move on to that. Um, Eagles are minus three and a half in Los Angeles, four Oh five kickoff time. Um, Dalton only three and a half. Look after, I think that line is so juiced because of what they saw versus the commanders, what the commanders went into Philly to do and almost win against the Eagles, the four and Eagles right now. Mm. But it's also the Rams that have also looked really good. I got to say, I was low on the Rams this year. I was like, oh, dude, the Rams aren't doing shit. Like, Cooper Cup's going to be injured for X amount of games. I just think Matt Stafford's washed, like all this stuff. And then Puka Nakua comes out of nowhere mm-hmm. and just yeah. – he's the reason why the Rams are the Rams right now. Matt Stafford and Puka Nakua is just a connection that I did not think was going to be happening. Like who the fuck even is this guy? He came off of like, yeah. he came off of indeed.com and <laughs> now he's getting, now he's getting historical passes and breaking records. Got a random uh, fact about Puka Nakua actually only team that was looking at the, after him at the, at the draft combine was Bill Belichick and the new England Patriots. They pass on him. <laughs> <laughs> LA takes him. Now he's a stud. Shout out Aiden Elgerby, big and Ben Tufts, big Pats fans. This episode of Odds on Favorite is brought to you by Tipsy Tailgate Media. So shout out to those guys. They passed on Puka. Now they have to deal with Juju Smith Schuster and Mac Jones. Really good stuff, boys. I hope you guys have fun with that. Only team that <laughs> us Giants fans can make fun of is the Pats right now. Only team. They're just as bad. Yeah. It could be worse. It could be. But Look, you know what? Who I, you know who I give credit to? I give credit to uh, Bill Belichick's blood pressure medication because, my God, I don't know how that guy hasn't died my of a heart God. attack yet. Yeah, he should have retired with Tom Brady, <laughs> and he would have been a Hall of Famer coach, and it would have. I been mean, that. granted, he still is a Hall of Famer coach. He, he still, still is. Still is one of the best coach, ever. Of but he's he's, he's got to deal with some some crap right now. He's flushing his record down the toilet. You know, people that just started watching football, they're like, who the fuck is this old ass guy? And yeah. What the hell is he Why doing? Is he so they don't know what. Time. Yeah, I mean, come on. I'd be mad too. But hey, yeah, I got to give credit too. to Brian Dayball's uh, blood pressure medication too because my God, that guy looks like a tomato on the side of the fucking bench <laughs> every t- every game, man. I, I, every yeah, game is surprised. He was interesting. Um, Anyways, Philly, we'll LA, get... we'll kick it back though. Um, did you give an official pick or did I cut you off? No, not yet. So we got okay. We got the Eagles with four straight games of four hundred plus yards, and the Rams are only averaging two hundred ninety five point eight yards per game. I think 
this game is one of the 4 p.m. games that's kind of going to be like a flip up. I'm on the Eagles. I think the Eagles win, but I think that the Rams are going to keep it very close. I think because like we saw what the Rams did, they came back and they won against who who did they play the Colts or someone? Yeah, the Colts week? last week. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's the Colts, but like I mean, they came back. It, it was like one of those games where you, you turn it off at halftime and then you look on ESPN in the morning and you're like, what the hell? The Rams won. I wasn't expecting that. But yeah. you know, they got Puka Nakua. Cooper Cup is back. He is coming back. And I don't know if you saw that video going around of that nasty footwork he was doing with the cone drill. He looks good and he looks healthy. And people are like, oh, I'm not starting Cooper Cup because of Philly and this and that. Look, Eagles secondary has struggled. They're allowing the sixth most passing yards to wide receivers. Like, as good of a Philly team this is, they don't have the the defense right now to stay on Pukunakua and Cooper Cup. Two targets that are going to be hot this week. Hot. I like it. Eagles 34, Rams 31. I'm taking the plus four and a half for the Rams. And I'm also taking a cup touchdown. Anytime touchdown. Are you kidding me? Ooh, Cooper Cup's not, a, a Cooper little Cup's anytime not TD back. again by Dalton. <laughs> Cooper Cup's going to, you're telling me he's going to be riding the bench for a year and a couple weeks and he's not going to come back in a, into Ram, into SoFi Stadium, his home stadium, and not t- get a touchdown. Yeah, it's That's true. Crazy. It's been a long time for him. Um, Tone's play is Eagles minus three and a half. He didn't really give a lot of reasoning for that. He kind of just said Eagles minus three and a half. So um, I'm I'll, I'm not telling him, honestly. I'm telling you, Dalton. I'm going Rams plus I, I saw four and a half also. I don't know where he saw three and a half, but I saw four and a half also for the Rams. Um, I am really, I don't know. One Here's a stat for you, Dalton. I know you're a stat guy. The Eagles, every game that they've played this season has been Besides the Bucks game, which got a little out of hand toward the end of the game, a one-score game for a majority of the time. They yeah. have won. They beat the Vikings by a touchdown, like the Pats by three. Like they're 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 playing close. They're winning, but they're playing close. I think they do that again. Rams are a good team. I think they put themselves a little bit in on the map here. They fall, but they put themselves make a name for themselves in this one. Rams plus four and a half. I, I actually switched my pick on my board right now. I have Eagles, but. I'm switching my pick. I'm going Rams uh, plus four and a half. Um, we're kind of running it. out of time here on the Zoom meeting, though, so we will kick it right to the Sunday night football game, which is Cowboys 49ers. 49ers are – we're going to um, Levi Stadium in San Francisco, 49ers 4-0, Dallas 3-1. This is the game of the week for the NFL. This is a four-point spread, I believe, in favor of San Francisco – I'll kick it off. I believe I'll say Tone's pick first. He is on 49ers minus four. Um, He likes them. Michael Parsons a little bit questionable for this one. So is Debo Samuel. So two big names that we may or may not see play this week. I, for one, like the Cowboys this week plus four. I don't know. I was all over the 49ers last week. They were my mortal lock. I thought they killed them. But this week, I'm loving the Cowboys. They got Trey Lance feeding them info on the sideline. That report just came out earlier today. I think the 49, the Dallas Cowboys come prepared. They need to make a, a statement for themselves. This is the game. This is a legit game. You want to win a Super Bowl? This is the team you got to beat to do it. I think Dallas comes out strong here. I think they pull off a win. Dallas plus four. Tones on 49ers minus four. Dalton, I'll kick it to you before we get to the mortal locks. Uh, I like 49ers minus four. I didn't really get to do much research into this game, but uh, you know, it's the red hot 49ers going into – they're at home, right? The 49ers? Yeah, they're at home. So, mm-hmm. look, I don't know. Brock Purdy, I think he's going to be a little nervous in the first half. I think he's going to be a little shaky, get a pass intercepted here and there. But overall, I think he's going to still do good with what he's got. I think Debo Samuel is going to play. At what He had like a bruised rib or some shit. It was, or, uh, yeah, I don't even know like what it that. was. I think it's the same thing as T. So, I, I think it was a bru- bruised rib, something like that. I don't know. So, I mean, I'm reading the stat real quick. It's the Cowboys are 26 and 12 against the spread in the past three se- three seasons, tied with the Lions for the best record in that span. They're 13 and 6 against the spread on the road, tied with the Bengals and the Cardinals for the best record. Look, I don't even know who's going to win this game, but I think it's going to be the 49ers. By how many points? 
I still think it's going to be like a 26-20 game. I think that the 49ers will cover four. Okay. Um, before we get into the mortal lock quickly, cause we got only a few minutes left on the zoom. Um, any, anything to say about the Monday night game, green Bay Packers, Las Vegas Raiders, this game stinks. Um, Packers are minus one in L in Las Vegas Raiders. They kind of suck Packers. Kind of, may, they might also suck. I'm not too sure <laughs> what's going on there. They lose to the Lions 34 20 last week. It was just, I don't know. This game, this game stinks, but I kind of like the Packers to go into, Las Vegas and pull out the win. This is a pick 'em game, so I'll take the Packers yeah. plus money on the road. Um, we'll see how legit Jordan Love really is, and we'll see if the Las Vegas Raiders really can come out to play. They have lost three in a row since pulling off that come from behind win against the Broncos in week one. They got they lose by seven to the Chargers last week, divisional opponent. Um, but they got Green Bay this week. I kind of like Green Bay on the money line. Las Vegas kind of sucks. Uh, Dalton, any quick things before we get into the mortal locks? Uh, in my my pick 'em league, the one I'm in for you know money and everything, I took the Raiders to win. But uh, you know, I like this is just such a bad game. But for this, I'm I think I'm gonna go Green Bay minus one. Okay. It it it's a it's a shootout. Both teams suck. I don't know. Jordan Love is. You know, he's better than I thought he'd be, but both teams are just – dude, they're, it's a Monday Night Football that no one wanted to see, just like the Giants game. I didn't want to see that, and I was even at the game. It was embarrassing. I don't know who's going to win this game. I couldn't even tell you, but I I like minus one for Green Bay because I feel like they're just going to – they're on, what, a two-loss two, two loss streak? And yeah, three I in think, a row for I think Jordan Las Love Vegas. will do something. Jordan, yeah, they lose 34-20. To the Lions. I think the Lions are actually pretty good, though. They're minus, like, what, 12 this week to Carolina? But, anyway, we'll get into the mortal locks as we run out of time here. Tone hasn't sent me his mortal lock, so as of now, he doesn't have one, but we'll fill it in um, if after the episode, if he, he texts us his pick, or if he texts us one at, right now while we're recording. I'll start first. Um, rivalry game going on on CBS at 1 o'clock in Pittsburgh. Baltimore Ravens are going to Pittsburgh. Big rivalry game. This is this is his, oh, this is a tale as old as time, as some would say. The Ravens and the Steelers a lot go. They like to go at each other, and we're Giants fans. We watch a lot of bad football. A lot of bad football. I think the Steelers might be worse. I'm taking the Ravens minus four and a half in Pittsburgh. I think the Ravens go into Pittsburgh, and I think they beat up on them. Lamar Jackson looked like his old self last week. Mark Andrews. Back in action, Lamar Jackson running for a few TDs. He looked like the Lamar, the MVP Lamar last week. Ravens looked dominant. Uh, they're two and zero on the road this year. I think they go three and zero. They beat up on Pittsburgh in the rivalry game. Ravens minus four and a half. That's my mortal lock. Shout out John, my buddy. He's from Baltimore. He's telling me Ravens, Ravens, Ravens. I got you, Ravens. I love it. I mean, I would be. I I am all over the Ravens this week. I think the Steelers absolutely blow. They're also one of those bottom tier teams, along with the Giants. Look, a lot of weird games this week. I could tell you a lot of different picks. Like, why is Tennessee Titans minus two against the Indianapolis Colts? I think the Colts are so much of a better team. I could give you a plus two, but I'm going to put that on the back burner. Panthers minus nine and a half against the Carol Carol or sorry. Lions minus nine and a half against the Panthers. This dog shit 0 and 14 against this hot, hot NFC North team. Give me the Lions minus nine and a half. Land those points. Okay. All right. So that's just going to be, that's just going to do it. Uh, no lock from Tone this week. Um, I'll almost no, you bet you he was probably thinking Colts also, just because I know He's him. Got one. And I, that was, that's what jumped off to me. He sent it. Yeah, he, he's – so Tone's on the Chiefs and Vikings over 52 and a half. Now, nah, he's looking at it all wrong. The script says under. But Tone, <laughs> he's got the Chiefs and the Vikings okay, over Tone, 52 I, and You know half. what? I was looking at the board earlier, and that one kind of jumped out at me too, so I'm glad I didn't take it. I, I, it's crazy, bro. I, I Three things that jumped out to me were Ravens, Colts, and over in the Vikings and the Chiefs game. I was like, wow, like these three just like are screaming at me. But I'm going Ravens. Wow, I'm You're locked. on the – you're on the Lions. Tone is on the over. That's just gonna be. That's just gonna do it for us this week. A little bit shorter of an episode, so I apologize for that. But next week, 
Tone, me and Dalton will be back in action. Hopefully we'll get a special guest into the mix next week. We'll see if he uh, stops being a bum and decides to join us on the episode. <laughs> Maybe we'll try and get Aiden or one of the guys from Tipsy on with us as well. Um, thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you guys next week. Let's hope these picks, Mac. We'll see you at the cash counter.